This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. Time for the Midnight Racers. Relish the roar of engines in the darkness in this high-speed showdown for tuned cars held exclusively on nighttime tracks. Any car can enter as long as it meets the race requirements. So essentially it's a mix of Nightmasters and the tuned car championship. So we have Daytona Road Course for three laps, Spa Frankenshaw for three laps, and the Nurburgring 24-hour layout for one lap. And for this, I'm going to be using a car that is... It's a race car? A slow one? I think it's considered a Pikes Peak car? But regardless, it was one of the DLC cars in this game. It wasn't really paid DLC, it was like part of some random update. It says new on the dealership because technically it's a new car added via an update but yeah we're gonna go ahead and buy the 2011 lexus isf ccs-r a purpose-built race car that battled at the vln and pikes oh oh so this competed in vln at the nurburgring which obviously matches the nurbur 24 race and then obviously pikes peak which is a hill climb that's crazy But yeah, this thing looks really, really rad. Look at it. And it's orange, too. I mean, come on. Can you get any better than that? I don't think so. Anyways, race number one at Daytona's road course. So I guess it is kind of fitting, then choose this car because is the Lexus in I think it is an IS I'm not sure if the Lexus GT3 car that competes in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship is an IS but the point is it's a Lexus and it competes at, it competes in at Daytona and then obviously Nerver 24 that's a although it's not the 24 hour layout it's the VLN layout that it competes on it's still part of the Grand Prix section and then the full Norschleife so it does match it makes sense so anyways we're gonna go with the chase cam for Daytona that's quite an engine sound It sounds like a fucking popcorn maker. Just kind of squeeze my way through there. Oh fuck! No grip on the on the escape road. RG bargy on my end, but given that they tone a road course, and I gotta go catch the the front runners before they get on the banking. Although, from what we saw with the, what's it called, um, the Posse Motorsports Camaro, it, we didn't lose out on the, on the oval too much. Okay, this thing's an 8-speed. Wow. We're not going to use every gear, obviously. We're going to only use maybe 7 at best if we catch... If we catch a toe coming into NASCAR 1, probably, but... It's quite interesting. Let get this room. Uh, hardly. So, through the bus stop for the first time. Yeah, we're losing out quite a bit to the two front runners. That's the Amusa 2000 in second. Who the hell is leading the race? Oh, we don't even need a tow to go into seventh. The run out the bus stop helps us. Okay. The Ariamamiya battling the... Oh, the Skyline. Okay, mine Skyline. Am I surprised? Not really. 
Oh shit, I just freaking bumped him out the way. I'm a bully. I actually felt kind of bad for the little guy. Now the question is, is the Skyline standard or premium? It is quite an important question for me. Only because if, if for anyone who's watching up to this point and noticed the thumbnails, I do try to take shots around the premium cars because, or the semi-premium ones, because the standard cars, as much as you love them, they're, they're quite ugly. <laughs> Sorry to say, for some of our favorites. I was just turning way too early into the bus stop. That was a terrible line, Jesus Christ. Then again, I'm not used to driving um, chase cam. That looks like the 2000s model, aka the standard one. Yep, it is. Super late break on the skyline. But yeah, um, oh, <laughs> see, that's what happens when I get distracted to look out the window. I get onto the apron, and the apron's not the racetrack. Of course, the mine Skyline has more horsepower than us. It's super early braking. I don't think that's how that works, buddy. NASCAR 4, and there we go, round number one at Daytona, complete, only a 1.4 second margin of victory, I want to say it's because of the fact that this mine Skyline has way more horsepower than us probably, and we're probably just getting our time loss on the straight. the street on the oval section of the track jesus christ anyways replay saved and let's go on to race number two so here's what's interesting about race number two we have the option stream z on pole and then the 1974 mustang trans um cam can am i don't i don't remember what the car is called but two cars that can't turn are gonna be leading us a spa quite a technical circuit okay So this should be a really easy win then. We get two cars to your rouge? Yes, we can. Oh, the understeer. I still made the corner without cutting. Nice. I was finding the limits through there, through Eruge and Radeon with this car.
This car has a horn? It's a fucking race car. Or race car slash rally car, but okay. Oh, off, off the trick. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, we're already catching the, the front runners. Quite dirty with the R32, but that's fine. He was just standing there, not menacingly. That's right. Grand Touring Garage is the uh, manu is the manufacturer for for that car, for that Mustang, and it's a SEMA winner too. Lots of cool SEMA winners in the field, or in the game in general. with all the power in the world, but it can't turn for shit. Definitely a cool-ass car, though. We did clear him. Okay, good. Damn, we cleared him, and then he just left us a lot of room. What a gentleman. I'm pretty sure I said this before already, but it's so weird playing this track and not seeing the the meter signs on the left hand side of uh, in, into T1. Jesus Christ, I'm stuttering so much today. Um, it's really weird to not see those because I always use them as a reference in sport. I could have been better. I could have been way better, but it was good enough for now. So yeah, look at the sky. It's so nicely detailed. It just makes me sad that, like, the standard cars essentially ruin the, 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 the graphical prowess that is Gran Turismo 6. Like, you know, on, on, a, on its moments, this game looks jaw-droppingly gorgeous. And then you have the Suzuki Alta Works Sport Limited r rolling through, or the Super RZ, and it just makes the game take a huge step backwards. Like, I, I'm not one to really be bitchy about game graphics and stuff. Like, every game has to look realistic or whatever, but, like, I am a man that likes consistency. And to have, like, an inconsistency like that, it, it, it does make me kind of sad. Point six seconds ahead, not a surprise given the fact that this car can actually turn unlike the other ones. I figured the R32 would be further, would be closer to the fight for a second. Oh God. Not the way I wanted to take that corner, but I made an oopsie. So one more lap to go, and then we have Nurburgring to do, which is always a good one, a good time, fan favorite as well. There we go, well executed. I 
nice and steady. Yep. Now I know I'm more quiet, but like, I'm in such a good groove right now. Like, I haven't really driven Spa in a while. I think the last time I did was probably during the Nations Cup. I can't recall if it was like an early round of the Nations Cup in 2020. But it was Group 2 at, at this track. And the OP car was the, the, the 2008 GTR. I can't recall when it was. Or it might have been one of the exhibition seasons before I went top split. But like... It might have been one of the exhibition seasons before the actual official season started. But um, yeah, I had a pretty good race around here. Fortunately, I lost the recording, otherwise I would have uploaded it. Got the grass. Don't need to mean the grass. That's going to ruin our lap time. Not like we were going for a fast lap or anything. I was just vibing. Bus stop for the final time and winners of Spa. Yeah, even with that dumb spin spin celebration, um, still fast as lap. Those first two laps were pretty bad then. 33,000 credits. And let's move on to the final race. So for the final race here at the Nurburgring 24 hour layout, we have some cars that would be pretty ideal, like the Carbon R, like the HPA TT, and the R32, but they're not going to be a match for us, as we all know. Yeah, interesting interior. It looks almost stock, except for the um, dash in the middle. Engine sounds a lot better when you're in the cockpit view. Doesn't sound as much like a popcorn maker, but it's not the best sounding car. Oh. That would have been an SR down. Any damage to the car? No, not really. But yeah, we're already going to pass P1. I wouldn't be surprised if we get first place before the Norris Lifa. Oh shit. We're not going to get P1 doing that. But yeah, I mean, we are in the actual circuit that this car was meant for to begin with. No surprises here that we're actually going to catch the leader now. And I think Nurburgring turn one just helped too, given the fact that the 24 layout like has that chicane essentially where we leave the stadium and or we shortcut the stadium, I should say. That's more proper and pretty much everyone is just stuck there. You can easily pick up the AI cars quickly. And yeah, Already took the lead before the Norse Lifa. Oh, I felt the understeer going through hats and back. Fuck. Not normally a corner I mess up at, but we did it today. We already have a huge lead. Myself and the Carbon R have a huge lead over the HPA TT. Oh 
all bad. Now we pretty much just cruise here from here on into the wind. So yeah, we're just hauling ass at this point. I said we're gonna cruise, but we're we're sending it. So now I wonder what the gap is gonna be to the Amuse. What the hell is the margin of victory gonna be as well? I'm gonna predict one minute. I think it, I think it might be a little bit too bold, but yeah, I, I don't even see him on the radar. Oh fuck. Yeah, we're not gonna win by a minute if we keep doing this. Seventeen seconds. Yeah, it might not be a minute, but it's gonna be a hefty amount, I reckon. Now this section he could gain some time on us. But given that there are some flicks and one breaking zone, it might be irrelevant. We'll find out right now, I guess. Nineteen seconds, okay. Section after the carousel is where we will probably see if we can get that one minute margin of victory. Because of how twisty and technical it is. My favorite sort of section of the entire track. Twenty two seconds, okay. Oh god. Well, any chance of finishing ahead by a minute is gone. Thanks to my massive fuck up. We lost a second, but we gained a you know whatever we lost, we pretty much gained it all back. In, the, in those few set of corners, twenty one point nine was the last gap that we had to the views. Now I wonder what the next one's gonna be. Probably thirty. Although I think that's a bit wishful thinking. Yep. Only gave three seconds. Alright. Yeah, maybe if we had a car that was actually like 600 performance points, we would have been able to win by a minute. 
But given the fact that this is an air quotes underpowered car, like. We were still able to only win by 30 seconds. So it's not over yet. The time could decrease on the straightaway here. And again, by the time he actually reaches the straightaway, we would probably be done with the race or not reaches the straightaway, but maybe reaches like the second scoring loop. I don't know what I'm saying. Timing uh, loop is right there. What I'm trying to say is by the time he reaches the second one, which is at the bridge at the very end of the straightaway here, we're going to be, we're already going to be, you know, done with the race, so it wouldn't really matter. Again, that's what I get for uh, looking off screen. My seventh gear ability taken away. We would have had enough speed for it, but... All I know is that margin of victory, yes. Because we completely dominate. The final round of the Midnight Racer is here at... <laughs> what, what a great way to end. Um, at the... Uh, <laughs> Nerva 24. Oh my god. I'll admit too, I did, I did only get a few hours of sleep last night. So... That's always the norm for me, but even less sleep. And that's kind of messing me up now. Now that we're recording in the evening, so yeah, I'm feeling a little bit sleepy. So yeah, only four more championships to go into in the inter in international B license section. How exciting. We are currently at... 56% of the way down, 44% of the way to go. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Gran Turismo 6. Next time on the OP, we'll be taking a look at the fighting muscle.